Hi, this is Dario. Welcome back to my channel, Motley Reads. Uh, this is the uh, fourth and the last video in my um, November uh, non-fiction uh, series. Uh, we have four uh, prompts in the in the non-fiction November. Uh, the first one uh, was uh, that I did was um, uh, Buzz. Uh, the second one was Movement. Third one was Discovery, and now it's the time for the fourth prompt, which is time. Now, well aware that uh, that it's not November uh, anymore, but you know I I read most of the of this of this book during during November, so so just you know to round up everything, so so we're gonna pretend that it's still November now. So uh, the fourth uh, book here uh, for the prom time is um, this book. It's the Victorians by Jeremy Paxman and the. Uh, here the title uh, Victoria and it says Britain through the paintings of the age so we are moving uh, back in time to to Victorian Britain and um, this book uh, I uh, I purchased it um, in end of September uh, I was I was uh, to London uh, on, a, on a work trip uh, you know you, I just I managed to get there you know in this this uh, short window where Sweden was off the COVID list uh, in England so I managed to managed to go there, there do some work and I and I and I thought for October I would like to I would like to uh, buy uh, a book uh, that I either can read during October or non-fiction uh, November. Uh, that is about the, about Victorian England. Uh, I, I don't. I didn't read very much about the period as such. Of course, you know, reading from the period and about period in in, in some other publications, but no really book about the period. So I, I went to to Waterstones and naturally, you know, you, you are you are in the UK and Victorian era is a big thing. So there was you know this whole shelf. No, actually two shel two large shelves full of the, you know Victorian Britain literature. So I, I found this one, and this is uh, published by BBC Books, and uh, it is published by BBC Books because it was also a documentary series on BBC. And Jeremy Jeremy Paxman is a is a TV personality uh, in the UK. Uh, so, so uh, this uh, sounded uh, pretty uh, interesting uh, to me, and and you know, as I love uh, love art and 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 um, and I, I like very much uh, British art, so I thought this is this is very good way uh, to to get to know Victoria Britain, you know, uh, trying to look you know at, at the paintings from that age and see you know what I, what they are telling us about the about the time past. So. Uh, and you know th this book is is really about as the as the author is saying here is that many of these paintings have a cinematic quality to them as if they are still frames from a movie but the coming of the cinema spelled the end of the kind of storytelling pictures that these artists have painted for so long the physical legacy of the victorians is all around us we walk the city streets, rush through the railway stations they engineered, and live in the houses they built. They shaped our world and it shapes us. We take it for granted, but the paintings of the time provide a striking insight into Victorian social history. They show us what it must have been like to live in a rigidly structured society, to acknowledge an imperial destiny, and to wrestle without, to huddle in the snow waiting for admission to a night shelter. These underappreciated paintings hang on the walls of galleries across the land, and they belong to all of us. So this is very much uh, uh, what is it about? It actually, you take a look at the at the at the British society during Victorian age, uh, uh, through you know through the paintings that that are in our galleries in our museums uh, today, and uh, the book is structured around them um, around the five uh, themes. Uh, it says uh, first is uh, the mob in the picture gallery. It, it is it is talking talking about you know how the uh, how the uh, popular uh, art popular paintings were received by the public uh, and and the and by by the critics and by the authority. It, it was really really big thing back then because you know they didn't have a television, they didn't have a social media. They, they this was basically the, the you know the uh, the way they they actually. Uh, Picture the society they were they were they were living in and 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 they the content the content in the pictures was very very much you know a social commentary of the time. 
Second part is Die a Long Day's Work. It is about the uh, fate of, of uh, working people uh, in uh, in England. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, a pretty pretty tough, pretty hard times, as as Charles Dickens would put it. Number three, the angel in the house. It's uh, it is about about the role of of of, of females uh, in a Victorian society, which was uh, although uh, although although improving, uh, it was it was pretty uh, uh, pretty bad. Uh, number four, uh, a world of wealth and power. And this is uh, about the imperial Britain, about you know the, the empire's uh, you know um, uh, high point and, and and the start of decline, and finally uh, a land of dreams. And it is more about uh, about the uh, uh, about the religion and about the you know uh, the world of, of fairy tales and 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 and, and, and the fantasy uh, that was that was uh, quite popular back then. So so uh, you know they, they are bringing up uh, dif different artists uh, here. They talk about the about the life they were they were living, and they are also uh, presenting paintings. So so you have uh, throughout the book you have these you know black and white uh, pictures of some paintings, and then you have you know two middle sections of. Um, uh, the, of paintings here in in uh, in the in this book, where these paintings that that he's talking about uh, in the book are presented. Uh, one thing that that uh, I uh, that was a little bit frustrating when reading this book is that you know he is talking about about uh, much more paintings than they than actually than they actually are in the book so so you know if you get intrigued then you get intrigued quite often often because he's describing you know quite elaborately the painting then you need to go and google because you, you may not find it in a book but you know many of them i would say roughly half of them you you can you can find you can find them uh, here in a book and um there are lots of lots of stories here that 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 really engaged me that 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 uh, that, that taught me something uh, about uh, about uh, Britain then and Britain now uh, for for uh, for that matter uh, lots of you know interesting um, interesting stories of the time uh, just you know to mention one uh, Crimean war uh, and and you know uh, Crimean war this is you know mid uh, mid 1800 uh, I think that uh, let's see when when was this? It is like um, uh, there is this painting, Charge of the Light Brigade at the Battle of Balaclava, 1854. So so he, uh, here is the uh, this is the war a uh, Crimea war that you have just you know uh, heard about. I didn't know very much uh, very much about it. Uh, and uh, and you know you read about about the Crimean War, you read about this specific battle at, uh, battle at, at Balaclava, and 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 then also it, all of that is taught through through the, through the paintings of that time. And in, here in this case, there are two paintings by Elizabeth Thompson, um, Lady Butler. Uh, the first one is, here is is called uh, the Roll Call, uh, where you can see actually you know the 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 regular regular guys. Uh, after the battle, uh, and and then and then uh, the battle of Balaclava, which is which is basically a quite a devastating, devastating loss for British army, um, and and uh, you know what you learn about uh, about that time when when you, when you, you, you Crimean War times and Vic Victorian times that that military grade I didn't know this uh, that military grades uh, you were actually able to buy military grades if you are if you were a nobility. And, and wanted to be a major or or, or captain or, or or colonel or whatever, you know, you could buy your grade. You know, the high the higher grade you want, you, the more you need, you had to pay. And you know, that's fine. You know, walking around calling yourself major when you're not a major, but it becomes quite difficult when you actually you know call yourself major and then you go out to war and lead troops. Uh, without you know knowing anything about about military strategy and military tactics, you 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 are commander uh, of you know these these poor poor lads that that you know are out there and 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 in the war because they they really don't have a choice, and uh, you know uh, at this battle of Balaclava, uh, what what happened there, which many of the stories are around, and, and you know this this picture here is about, is that the a, uh, a British were uh, defending a port uh, town of, of Balaclava against uh, Russians, 
and uh, due to incompetence and miscommunication uh, of um, of the of the uh, of these uh, officers who actually bought their their grades, um, uh, the 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 troop of, of you know six hundred uh, men in the in the light brigade uh, were sent to a certain death. So 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 in basically they were commanded to to rush against the Russian troops that were standing there you know, with 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 the battery of cannons and, and you know and and they, they were completely. Uh, completely slaughtered, and and the and then you know the 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 guy that that was their commander, he of course you know survived. The the guy that bought his his military military grade, he came back to Britain and was a hero, of of you know of a battle at at, at Balaklava, and then. Um, there is a, a, a you know this was this was later corrected and 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 the, the true story came out but but it was very very uh, tragical and it was also uh, this uh, story is depicted in number, numerous paintings uh, uh, one of them is this is this one by by lady uh, butler it is a, it is a, a beautiful painting and there are all, there is also uh, a poem here by by um, tennyson uh, it's called the Charge of the Light Brigade, uh, and the, the, here is a portion of it. It goes like this: uh, Forward, the Light Brigade. Was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone, someone had blundered. Theirs is not to make reply. Theirs is not to reason why. Theirs but to do or die. Into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Uh, and this is, you know, a uh, uh, tragical story, but uh, to me it was something new and it was in it and I also made a, a literary connection to me when I read this is, you know, uh, in, in this poem by Tennyson, it says, not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. And this, you know, sentence, someone had blundered uh, is... I know it from from uh, uh, to the lighthouse that I read in 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 August and I and I and I loved it. It's one of my favorite books of of, of uh, all time, and um, uh, one of the pr uh, protagonists there, um, um, Mr. Ramsey, uh, he is. Uh, 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 you know, going around and, and and being grumpy and thinking and 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 repeating. You know, someone had blundered, and I was you know reading that and thinking, okay, well, what you know. What does it mean? What, what, where, where does it come from? And now, you know, I'm, I'm learning, learning about the charge of the light brigade. So, so quite, quite uh, interesting connection. So, so, so this book, you know, it's uh, I, I really, really learned a lot. I'm, I'm Anglophile, uh, like many of, of you know, know. So, so, so it was, it was kind of a given that that uh, I would uh, like a book like this. It is very readable. It is, it is written by you know this TV journalist. Uh, so, so. Uh, uh, or dictated, uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, by this TV, TV journalist, uh, it, so it is. It is written in a very accessible language. It, it is. It is. Uh, it is not. It is. It is popular. Uh, uh, popular book. So. So um, I recommend it to 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 everybody interested in the Victorian age, uh, and or art. To pick up uh, uh, this book. And speaking of of the of the Victorian art, uh, w when I was when I was reading this book, I I, I went back uh, uh, to to uh, looking into my other books about uh, about uh, Victorian art. And here I have a, a, a catalog from Tate Britain. That is uh, that is a collection that has uh, quite a lot of art from that period, and it's it's uh, it's a museum uh, that I. Uh, love to visit uh, very often, uh, and I, I picked out uh, three uh, pictures here to show to you that are kind of uh, illustrating, you know, some of the of the takeaways from that that age. You know, one one is the situation of women in the Victorian society. You know, being a woman in the Victorian society uh, uh, was you know was a pretty pretty difficult on in any. Uh, uh, any level in a society, really, you know, being a poor and being a rich, it was it was relatively difficult versus being a male. Uh, and um, here is a one uh, one picture uh, that is uh, uh, painted by Emily Mary Osborne, uh, and um, it's called Nameless and Friendless. So here we have a, a picture of a young uh, female artist 
who is uh, coming and trying to sell uh, her painting uh, to to an uh, to an art dealer or or or, or antiquary or art dealer probably, and she has to be escorted by her younger brother over there because you know female uh, you being a female you are really not not able to take care of yourself. So a man, a man has to take care of yourself. So even if it's your if it's your baby brother there, so so he's taking her there and you, you can see you know her posture being quite insecure uh she's you know pulling a piece of rubber there you know her skirt is all muddy and uh, and uh, overcoat is wet they've been you know, walking through rain from from uh, god knows where the guy at the at the uh, dealer uh dealers you know he's looking skeptically uh, at her work there and the whole situation is you know she's very uh, in a very kind of you know uh, submissive uh, position there, so this is a quite uh, quite uh, interesting uh, interesting picture, uh, good depiction of of that age. Another one is um, a painting by John Frederick Lewis, and it's called the Courtyard of the Coptic Patriarch House in Cairo, circa 1864, and this is a kind of a a, a picture of the. Uh, a nostalgic uh, uh, vision of the imperial Britain. So you can almost, almost uh, feel being there at that time, you know, mid 1800s Egypt, British Egypt, this, you know, colonial romantic times, although we know that, that, that things were uh, all but um motivating romantic views but still you know it is uh, this picture is really you know you, you can you can get you can get almost transported over there when you look at it and then and then uh, uh, a third piece uh, that I uh, that I picked up is uh, is a uh, picture by George Clausen uh, it's called girl at the gate at the gate this is from 1889 and um it is about the about this situation of, of, of peasants on, on, on the countryside. You know, they were they were really really poor, living living really uh, really uh, poor and depressing uh, life. Uh, so here is a girl at the gate. It is living with the old people there, and you know she's having this this quiet um, depressive expression in her face. And this is uh, painted by George Clausen. And when I saw this painting first time, I thought, you know, this is a very, very Danish style of painti painting. You know, this is uh, quite uh, uh, realistic and, and in, in a rural setting with, you know, these palette of colors, which is used by Danish artists very much. And of course, you know, George Clausen, it turns out that he's Danish. Actually, his father was, was Danish and he, uh, he learned the art uh, from his father so so this is so these are you know three pictures here from the from the tate uh, tate britain that that uh, that i just you know uh, picked out here as a as a companion to <laughs> to what i just just told you about this book so you know this book you know is really really good really really good i i, I felt i felt uh, really good when i when i when i read it so so it's it's highly recommended uh, to anybody interested in victorian era and the art so uh, for all of you that made it so far in, in the video, uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, for me, Nonfiction November is now officially over. Now, so now I need to, need to take care of, the, of December. See you. Bye.